even for each square meter of area. Both sides of the war are in an incredible trench warfare, especially in and near the city of Bakhmut in the Donetsk region. In recent days, the Ukrainian armed forces have turned their offensive axis 125 kilometers southwest of Bakhmut. In this region, Marinka, one of the most important centers of the eastern Ukraine front line, is located. Nowadays, Ukrainian forces have started to create a ground attack corridor in an area of 125 kilometers located between Bakhmut and Marinka. Since the last few weeks, the Ukrainian army has started to build up a military buildup in the Marinka region, even from the direction of Kordyomivka and Horlivka. These two cities are located in the northeast of Marinka. But there is another critical front line from Marinka to Kordyomivka and Horlivka. This is where Avdivitka is located. The distance between Marinka and Avdivitka is approximately 43 kilometers. In other words, the Ukrainian armed forces was able to get military support more comfortably from Avdivitka due to its much shorter distance than Kurimivitka and Orlivitka. All these military preparations indicated that after Bakhmut, the base of attack of the Ukrainian forces was Marinka. The sighting of the 108th Separate Mountain Assault Battalion in the Ukrainian army near this city was one of the most concrete examples of Kiev's attack plans in and around Marinka. In addition to sending the military resources of the Ukrainian army to Marinka, we will have to mention that there is a civilian Ukrainian force of about 5,000 people in this city. In other words, the Ukrainians were ready to start the freedom struggle in Marinka by backing both their military power and the people's resistance presence. The Ukrainians, who were ready for an all-out offensive operation, finally started their offensive operations in Marinka recently. A total of 39 clashes took place in this city in just 24 hours. As a result of these incredible clashes, the 108th Separate Mountain Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, together with local people, managed to break through the three-kilometer Russian defense line in Marinka. The Russian forces in this region had to withdraw their defense shields at the same rate in order not to increase the military losses. After the heavy defeat of Russian President Vladimir Putin in Bakhmut in the last few days, this fiasco in Marinka also seriously demoralized Russia for Russia. Ukrainian Armed Forces Land Forces Commander Oleksandr Sirsky made critical statements on this issue. Commander Sirsky stated that the struggle will continue both in Bakhmut and in Marinka around this city. While the local people and the special forces of the Ukrainian army, who were the architects of the Ukrainian victory in Marinka, continued their attacks, it is known that the city was badly damaged due to clashes. Marinka Township, located just a few kilometers west of Donetsk City, was reportedly completely destroyed, and local authorities and law enforcement forces were reportedly forced to evacuate all remaining civilians from a population of 9,000 before February 2022, in November 2022. The humanitarian workers who made up Marinska Romada estimate that out of a pre-war population of 40,000, only 65,000 civilians remained. The situation around Marinka is also very critical. Villages in Krasnohorvika, located on the northern line of the city, are subject to frequent shelling, and access to electricity, gas, or piped water is limited despite service providers' efforts to repair the damage caused by repeated attacks. In Krasnohorvika, for example, at the end of April, there was no electricity, water or gas, according to local authorities. In addition to the massive destruction of homes and other vital civilian infrastructure, including schools, the war has disrupted markets and other essential services, according to a rapid assessment by the NGO REACH and information provided by Ukrainian authorities. In addition, this situation forced people to a great extent. Humanitarian aid and the support of volunteer groups are more needed for survival. This is why Ukrainian forces are trying to at least clear Russian troops both on the Bakhmut front line and in the trenches in and around Marinka. After these operations, the reconstruction of these cities is planned with the help of the West and the USA. So. 
What is the latest situation on the front lines in and around Bakhmut? Marinka, after these striking offensive operations by the Ukrainian army. Former Russian commander Igor Girkin recently upended the strategic senselessness of Russia's claimed victory in Bakhmut. Yevgeny Prigozhin, commander and founder of the Wagner Group, a paramilitary unit, claimed that his troops had taken full control of Bakhmut on Saturday after months of fighting for that city. Commander Prigozhin's allegations, which could not be independently verified, were denied by Ukraine. Because Colonel Serhii Chevrovati also announced that Commander Prigozhin's statement was not correct and that the Ukrainian forces struggle in Bakhmut continued. While Commander Prigozhin celebrated the alleged victory, Girkin drew all the attention with his statements that the opposite was the case. Commander Girkin, who came to the fore during Russia's annexation of Crimea and was convicted of participating in the downing of Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 last year, has become a leading voice among Russian nationalists supporting the Ukraine war. But the former Russian commander began to be more and more critical of the Battle of Moscow. And Girkin, with his unbelievably accurate predictions, clarified unknown issues in the war between Ukraine and Russia. That's why Igor Girkin's statements about the latest situation on the front lines in and near Bakhmut are very important. The former Russian commander stated that the losses suffered by the Russian army in the eastern Ukraine front lines, such as Bakhmut and Marinka, were meaningless. According to Girkin, Russia was making a strategic mistake and continued its offensive operations despite record losses. While the exact extent of these losses is unclear, the White House estimated in early May that at least 30,000 Russian soldiers were killed in the Bakhmut area over a five-month period. In addition to the alleged losses of the Russian army, Igor Girkin points out that Wagner forces also suffered serious losses in these front lines. Military analysts, meanwhile, are bipolar about whether or not Bakhmut can truly deliver a strategic victory to Russia. While some analysts argue that Russia wasted time on Bakhmut and other eastern Ukraine front lines, another group of analysts argues that Bakhmut is important to the Russians. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin stated that a Russian victory in this city would be more of a symbolic value than actually changing the course of the war. So Lloyd Austin thought about Bakhmut just like Igor Girkin. In fact, when we consider this issue from a very broad perspective, we can clearly understand that both officials are right. Because, despite all the efforts of the Russian army, the fact that neither Bakhmut nor the eastern front lines, such as Marinka, have been able to completely capture, and even the Ukrainian forces have gained a more advantageous position in these regions, confirm this thesis. In addition, Girkin detailed his criticisms of Russia's military leadership. According to Igor Girkin, the armed forces of the Russian Federation took nothing but suffered profuse losses over Avdeivka, Inmarinka, and Vuledar. Girkin thinks that among these losses were Russian soldiers and officers at the front, mobilized and volunteers, not those who planned and managed from the big Russian headquarters. In other words, according to the former Russian commander, thousands of Russian officers and soldiers on the front line who gave only directives during the clashes on the front lines, such as Bakhmut and Marinka, paid for these wrong decisions with their lives. It is expected that this situation will continue in the same way in the future, because while President Putin is at the top of the administration and waiting for victory, the Ukrainians are striving with all their might to save their country and regain its freedom. As a result, Hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers lose their lives on the battlefield in Ukraine during this process. Russia, on the other hand, still wants to continue the occupation by hiding its losses.